Okay, this is Commander Julius Dedekind again, and today we're going to be looking at uh, answering the question that I had asked in the earlier video when we were talking about uh, power plants and what happens when they get to zero percent. And after doing some reading on some Reddit threads and a few other forums, I found that the answer just was not confidently expressed, so I decided to go ahead and test this out myself. And so, in order to do so, I'm going to go ahead and switch my ship because, and here's the context. When we, before we go out on our exploration, we need to know the limits of our ship. We need to be able to anticipate certain scenarios. Uh, for instance, uh, accidents as you're trying to scoop fuel off of a star or if you accidentally crash land into a planet instead of landing on it particularly high, gra high gravity planets and you're trying to land your massive uh, ship, overly massive ship in some cases, and forget that the you've got too many G's for the type of landing procedure that you've decided or had in mind. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to a, Vi a Viper Mark III. Um, nothing special. that part down so that I can actually hear myself think. Well, the last thing we need is module reinforcement when we're doing damage. Uh, fuel tanks could probably stay on, but what we really need are two separate, um, we need two separate compartments for our AFMU. I thought about moving the shield generator and having two, or moving the super cruise assist, but what we, I think what we can do is take one of these fuel tanks off. So let's just go ahead and do that. We can always refuel. We're not, we're not going to be jumping around much. So then we can have two AFMUs. Go ahead and try. Uh, we can do transfer option swap. And then we go to this empty compartment. Now we have a three and a two. And what do we want? We want... Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Okay, well, I guess we don't have that. Let's see if we can do this then. Oh, so if we want an AFMU, we got to take off our shield generator. Wow. That's not good. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, wow. What's going on here? Why is it that... Oh, that because it's a military compartment. Okay. So, let's go ahead and... Uh, I guess we can sell this module? We can always get it back. And then what we can do... <sighs> oh, this is going to be crap. So, we need at least a three slot. So that means we're moving the fuel scoop. Okay, store. And then we do browse, AFM, auto field maintenance unit. Do we need a really nice one? Should we get a nice one? Ah, oh, let's, let's get, let's get a 3C in both slots. Um, shop and another 3c wonderful now we can now we can go ahead and put a I guess we can't put anything in there so we'll just put our shield here shield generator uh, let's do a 2a why the hell not okay so now we got a shield generator now we have an empty Military compartment, which, oh, now we need something like a repair lipid controller, don't we? Is this going to be the ship of choice for this kind of test? I wonder. And the more I think about it, the more I think no, because we're going to need to repair the hull. And if we come back and repair the hull, 
it's going to end up repairing all the modules, which is what we don't want. So what we want to do is repair all the modules. We want to be able to go and damage our ship and continually repair all the modules and leaving the power plant unrepaired. And really the only way to do that is if we also have... Um, okay, so let's see what we get. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, can we do... Can we do repair lipids? Yeah, we can. We can do a repair lipid controller. Okay, so what we can do is sacrifice a couple of one slots. Oh, I hate doing this. Let's take out the... T let's take... Let's go ahead and store this one. And let's go ahead and put a... Uh, repair lipid controller. So we'll go hatchbreaker. There we go. Repair lipid. Repair lipid controller. There we go. Okay. And we'll need a... We'll need something to hold it. To hold our lipids. So let's go ahead and sell our fuel tank. Ugh. And then let's put in a cargo rack. Which gives us capacity too. And then what What do we do? Sit there and, and fly back and buy more lipids over and over again? That's going to suck. And we can't put anything in this damn military compartment except for hull reinforcement, module reinforcement, and shield cell banks. So we're kind of limited. But we do need two of these. And I tell you what, let's just go ahead and try this. Let's do browse, cargo rack, cargo rack. And then we're done. Now we have everything we need. And we can go buy our two lipids for repair. Let's go restock. And give ourselves two lipids. Cargo hold at maximum capacity. Okay. Now let's see what our jump range is. I bet it sucks. Oh, not so not so bad. Not so bad. Okay. So now, time for the test. We're gonna go fly into a white dwarf and almost destroy our ship. Crash into the exclusion zone of a white dwarf. There's no boost on this ship? How is that possible? I'm used to having boost. Oh, it's because I have the landing gear on. Duh. Alright. And as you can see, you can tell that I haven't spent a whole lot of time uh, docking manually. Docking and undocking. Now let's go ahead and pick a white dwarf. So. 
Alright. I have to turn this headset volume down. I can't even hear myself think. And here we go. Straight into the white more exclusion zone. We're gonna avoid the cone for now. Deploy heat sink. Find out how much damage we created. Uh, looks like it's not too bad. Heat sink deployed. Still waiting on the cooldown. Let's see if we, how close we are to the star. problem is, is that we're not getting enough damage, and we're only got a, re a rebuy cost is good grief, it's nothing. You know what? Engage warp drive. Let's hit the exclusion zone and the cone at the same time. This is going to be fun. Engage warp drive. Frame shift drive charging. Alright, so for, so for those who... Yeah, let's just create as much damage as possible. Yep, go ahead. Yep, there we go. Perfect. We need the whole system to fail catastrophically. Turn around and head back into that thing. Deploy heat sink. Ah, oh, there we go. <sighs> nice and cool. Do we have any more heat sinks? Are we out? Yeah, we got one more. Heat sink deployed. All right, let's go. Let's go get inside that cone, and let's fly straight into the exclusion zone. Engage warp drive. Engage warp drive. Let's go. I know, I know, I know. Nope. Let's get out of here. Deploy heat sink. to do it <laughs> okay let's uh, go ahead and recover um, well that's funny let's go ahead and purchase that was fun
Okay, so we're back. Reset head position. <clears throat> now I've got this not working, which is great. Reset head position. There we go. Okay, so in the last video, we tried to fly into the exclusion zone of a white dwarf to create as much damage as we could. And in the process, well, let's just say that it didn't end very well. So let's go find out what we did wrong. I reviewed the video um, and made, noticed that a lot of mistakes were made in the recovery process. I think I would have been able to get out had I had at least, uh, or at least the had not thought I was running out of heat sink launchers, or I had at least more than one uh, to work off of, because the reload time on the heat sink launcher, well, let's just say that wasn't working. So the other thing is that I could, I clearly started panicking and wasn't paying attention to the the most critical systems that were involved in the, in a catastrophic uh, breakdown. So right now. What I noticed is that the power plant uh, in that power plant, its output went down. And then I was able to engage the frame shift drive, but then when I did that, I couldn't pop a heat sink, or at least the voice command to do didn't do it. And then I forgot which switch on the controller. So these are good exercises to do because if you don't find yourself reacting properly in a situation. Instead, you, you, you panic, and you don't have a procedure for, uh, you know, then, well, you're as good as dead. So we're gonna try this again. Um, this time, I'm going to take a little bit more of a controlled approach. Instead of going, going into the white board, We're going to go to the, to the star. Oh, we have to make sure we have some inventory. Oh, we don't. Great. Okay, in the last video, we failed miserably to fail in a controlled manner. We tried to use a white dwarf and discovered just how lethal uh, trying to, well, getting caught in the white dwarf exclusion zone as well as its cone at the same time. It was a bad idea. So now we're going to try something a little different. We're going to go ahead and just go to the star and use the normal method of trying to induce failures. And the first thing I need to make sure we have our lipids restocked and so that we can go ahead and hold at maximum capacity. So that we'll have the ability to, um, well, we'll have the ability to repair our hull as well. Again, the exercise we're doing is to basically wreck everything well and then rebuild it and then but just repeatedly do this until the power plants all the way down to zero and the modules are all uh, relatively unharmed so in that unlike, unlikely scenario we want to know what happens uh, will the ship be able to recover itself from the zero percent power plant so let's go ahead and launch 
and let's go crash into a star. Okay, here we go. menus looking for it and I couldn't find it. Well that was that wasn't good at all. And going forward we're gonna make sure that if we don't see a heat sink get deployed immediately when I need it the most then I'm gonna go ahead and just do it manually but this time I know where to I'm so used to doing voice commands, I forgot where it was, which toggle switch it was, and I ended up doing other stupid things like shutting down my shields and going into silent running. Here we go, crash right into the star. are not good. Engage warp drive. Oh, wow. Okay, we're still in cooldown. Engage warp drive. Okay, we'll just go ahead and let the temperature climb. We don't care. because We want to create as much damage as we can. Alright, let's watch the damage as it's occurring. Make sure. All right. I know, I know, I know. I see it. need to repair the power distributor, the frame shift drive, the life support we can do later. We don't even need, need to do the super cruise assist, but I guess we might as well. Repair lipid controller we need to repair. 
sensors are important. Um, we don't need to repair anything else. We can just let the rest just fall to pieces. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and repair this one too. Cargo hatch. Why are we repairing that? That's just a waste. What do you cancel that one? Cancel the cargo hatch. We don't care about that. Okay. Now let's go ahead and repair one with the other. Repair one AFMU with the other AFMU, right? I have a feeling we're going to run out of stuff. And then we go ahead and see. And the problem is, is that in a lot of respect, I mean, look at this. We've only gotten 2% on our power plant. What's our power plant? Of course, it's modified, overcharged, monstered. Oh, yeah, reinforced components to increase power output at the cost of increased mass. So this this has, uh, see, I should have I just done a normal power plant. Instead, I have a 3A power plant on the damn thing. What the hell was I thinking? All right. Engage warp drive. Oh, of course not. We don't have we don't have all this stuff. Uh, let's turn this on. Let's keep all the rest of the stuff off. And turn our power screws, sensors. So we have everything working. Engage warp drive. Engage warp drive. So we go in there without shields. Let's see what happens there. Engage warp drive. Frameshift drive charging. To, it really takes a lot to destroy these ships. Now you know the limitations.
engage warp drive. Let's try something different. Frame shift drive charging. the cycle over and over again. <sighs> okay, we're going to need an easier way to do this. And I don't want to spend hours of cycling and, and repairing and crashing and repairing and crashing. We need a way to... Maybe I should have somebody target my power plant and destroy it. Now there's an idea. this one. Julius Commander. So this is Commander Julius Dedekind again, and we finally figured out a way to, uh, in a controlled manner, wreck all of our modules in such a way that we can wreck our power plant and repair everything else. So what I've been doing is repeatedly dropping out of warp at dangerous velocities such as, well, 400C, causing internal damage and taking down the power plant. And then what I do is I repair as needed the other modules to keep everything patched up. Here we go. Hopefully this won't kill us. Warning. Hull breach attack. Yep. Hull breach attack. 79%. That's fine. Alright, so we took internal damage. Now let's see what the damage is. We're down to, from 66% to 60%. Uh, let's see. Our AFMUs are okay, so I think we can do this again without any problem. So we'll just wait for cooldown again. good as far as I think we could so life supports 94 but we need to reduce the power plant down engage warp drive frame shift drive charging so we'll do this one more time and see if this works in the earlier experiments either I did too much damage or not enough. Hopefully we'll be able to survive from this one. Back up to 300 and 400. Alright, here we go. Turn. Yep. Fifty-four percent is our power plant, so we're gonna go ahead and do recovery. Let's go ahead and shut down all our systems. And we oh yeah, no well, I don't need that. I don't know why that's there. Uh looks like we can go ahead and begin our repairs. So I think Oh so yeah, I know, I know. Alright. So let's go ahead and bring our AFMUs online. And I could just go back to the station and repair. But I don't want to have to get back up to the point. Okay, so let's go ahead and repair life support. Because that's important. We don't care about the cargo hatch. 
Oh, shit. Should probably turn this back on. Okay, super cruise assist we don't care about. Frame shift we do care about. Repair that one. I think sensors are probably important because if we need to get back, we we'll want to do that. It's hard to. It's not easy when you don't have sensors. Okay, I don't need, okay we'll go ahead and repair that one. And the cockpit canopy, we'll go ahead and. That should have been one of my top priorities. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to try to do this until the power plant is no longer functioning. So I think it's going to happen way, way before 54, uh, way before we get to zero percent. But we'll just find out. And then what we'll do is we'll do a reboot and repair and see what, um, how that affects the systems. So far, so good. I've had to drop out at least uh, four or five times in order to get the power plant down to 54 percent, and then repairing all the other modules as we go. Okay. So the fast. And it appears that the faster you're going um, in frame shift, the more damage when you do an emergency escape. So yes, we probably should go ahead and repair our repair lipid controller and get that up and back up to 100%. We'll need it. We'll need that much. And I think we can go for another hit on our heat seek launcher. Alright, we got a malfunctioning uh, power plant malfunction message on our last dropout, one of the last dropouts. Okay, so for anybody who's coming into this video, this is a series basically. Um, <laughs> well, if you're watching this, um, what we're doing is a stress test. I don't think we need super cruise. Yeah, let's go ahead and get super cruise assist repaired. Um, the point of this exercise is to figure out where exactly our breaking point is with our power plant and how much we can recover. It basically it's a disaster recovery exercise on steroids. Uh, shield generator, don't think we need to repair that, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyways. And we're almost out of AFMU ammo, so we probably yeah this is this means that I may end up having to fly back to the station and and sort of uh, cherry pick what I want to repair in the station and I, I did that once or twice but it's just quicker to do it out here because once you get up to a point where the frame where you're out in the middle of nowhere you get up to those dangerous uh, speeds much faster than if you weren't if you were near to the stations or the other uh, uh, objects in the solar system in, in the system that you're in so, we're almost out of AFMU stuff, and that's it. So we don't have any way of repairing anything unless we synthesize new material. We're gonna have to, th we're gonna throw him offline and put this guy on inact inactive, put this guy on inactive, and turn everything back on. Cockpit, power plant, power plant is at 54. Engage warp drive. Oops. Engage warp drive. Frame shift drive charging. Let's see how long it takes. out at 600 times the speed of light.
took it down one notch. Alright. Oh, and we had our shields up. That mitigated some of the damage, no doubt. Five percent. Okay, so I went in and decided to. I'll go do some more research before I spend too much time looking at this uh, problem and going through all these tests. So we did find something here at the, this is it, the Elite Dangerous Astrometrics. This is a really good guide on exploration, by the way. I'll post the link in the description. Um, yeah, exploration for beginners covers everything. And as far as I've, and you can see, it's been updated for uh, exobiology. Let's go, which is Odyssey, obviously, because you can't do, you can't do exobiology in, uh, yeah, in Horizons, which is what I'm sticking to for the moment. Uh, so we get to the part where they talk about uh, the AFMUs. Um, which covered a lot of what I talked about and more, and how far they can go down. So you can you can still use them normally all the way down to one percent health, and you can get them to if you can do a reboot repair, you can get them working again. Now it does state here that the power plant cannot be repaired in the field at all, since it would have to be turned off, and your AFMUs need power. That doesn't answer the question as to whether or not a power plant. Uh, do a reboot, reboot repair will be able to repair itself. But my suspicion is that that's the case. Here it also talks about good choice for uh, modifications. Armored is good, and then uh, the, I think this particular uh, pilot uh, commander has indicated a preference to thermal, which is fine because, but the power plant only takes damage from emergency stops from super crews. So, that's and it looks like it's flat damage. Um, some of the claims that we were talking about uh, that we were testing, uh, it seemed like that the e-stops at higher speeds, uh, because you know if you're drawing more power and you do an emergency stop, then uh, maybe it would cause more damage. But I don't have enough data to know that, at least, and I'm too lazy to collect it. So, but what I'm really interested in is this part where the power plant will continue to operate even at 0% health. And then if your life support thrusters and FSD can run within 40% of your power plant's total supply, if it drops to 0% health and it doesn't outright destroy you, as it says here, uh, it'll just be reduced to 40%. So then that means you can, if your cr critical systems can work within that, uh, within those constraints, you can get to safety, reboot the ship, and bring the power plant back to full power output. Now, this is interesting. So you can do that at 0% health. That's how I read that. Um, so we're going to go do that. We're currently um, in this test scenario that I've been doing, that you've been watching, for the, and I've spent way too much time working on. Uh, I've got the power plant down to now about 5% on the Viper Mark III, and we're going to take it out for yet another test drive and do several emergency stops to try to get it down to 0%. So let's get started on that. 5%. Let's go ahead and cut off our shield generator, although I don't think this really matters. Shields offline. And then we'll do an emergency drop at 500, although I'm beginning to think that the speed doesn't matter either. Hopefully this will be the last run on this. Here goes nothing. I don't care. Let's just do it now. 
10 times just to get the power plant from 5% to 3%. Doing emergency drops just like this. Did it do anything to the power plant? No. Of course not. It was 3% before, 3% after. Hall integrity is down 33%. I've done this at least, I lost count. And I wish I had counted, but I lost count. I'm going to say conservative estimate probably at least 10 times. Guys, uh, three more attempts, uh, four actually, still at 2%, bad to do a cycle repair, here we go. I'm so tired of doing this. I decided against going because on a goof, I decided to drop out one more time with my shields up and apparently, that was enough to knock it down to 1%. I think the more power you're drawing from the power plant, the more, the, I would like to think that the lar bigger the chance you're gonna have when you drop out, do an emergency drop. So right now, we're at 1%. Warning, hull breach attack. Now our power plant is 1%. Still 1%. We're going to do this again. I don't care. I don't care about the internet. Zero percent again. Again. Well, 
bullshit. And again. Excited, but this took way too long. So we are now at zero percent. Okay, this has taken way too many takes, and I'm way too excited to think about this right now. So I'm just gonna cut the video right here. Okay, so we have finally reached, let me make sure that this is working properly, and I'm going to turn my headset volume down just a little bit so I can hear myself think. Okay, so here we are, pretty much everything is up and running. I don't see, I see output at 100%. And our power plant is at 0%. So technically, doesn't that mean that we should be operating at 40% of our maximum? So like for instance, I have everything up and running. Here, the frame shift drive works. Engage warp drive. Frame shift drive charging. Now this works. So what's going on? Let's do one more drop out and see what happens. If we drop out at 0%, will this cause the power plant to go critical, blow up, or whatever? Let's do it. Power plant still at 0%. All integrity is dropped. So what do we have to do to get this thing to operate it? Because we're using only 89% of it right now. If we turn on the all field maintenance units, we can, yeah. I mean, we had, we had, modules that went down before because we can't run everything at the same time. So let's go ahead and turn off our thrusters. Uh, let's do a reboot and repair and see what that does. I, I don't expect that it will do anything, but it's worth a try. Okay, so here we go. What is it going to tell us about it? Okay. Okay. So the modules are... What's been repaired? What was repaired? Zero modules. So nothing was repaired. 
So obviously nothing is going to get us uh, back our <laughs> our health. Power plant health is now down to zero. We're still operating at 100%. So I don't know what that means. Does this Does this mean that I have to go and spend another hour, perhaps, testing this build to see what happens if I continually drop, uh, do emergency drops when my power plant is at 0%. Does that mean that at some point, uh, due to random number, you know, the random number generator, I will end up with uh, negative or, you know, which means power plant goes critical, blows up, ship dies, all that, etc., etc. I have no clue. And to be honest, with the amount of time I've put into into trying to get this to fail, I don't see the point in continuing this exercise. I can't imagine, even in the worst of times, having I can't. I've lost count how many times I've I've done emergency drops and stops on in this ship that that doesn't even have a very good power plant a, a grade e uh you know it's just stock when you buy the ship so you know my conclusion is that the power plant to zero at least you know you've got a chance uh you're going to be spending a lot of time if you're down to one percent i wouldn't worry about it too much you could be hundreds of light thousands of light years away uh, hundreds of jumps away and that power plant will be just fine I, I just don't see um, and the uh, also the evidence where's the evidence that I'm supposed to be operating at 40 percent because obviously I'm not I'm still operating at full power I can still have all of my modules with the exception of the modules that I didn't think were going to run anyways and I wasn't expecting to run but I don't see where this is going to cause me any issues. Maybe not. Maybe maybe further testing is required. But uh, as far as I can see, I've got a ship running at full power and, and a power plant with 0% health. So make that, make of that what you will. Um, I'm going to stop this nonsense and get in my uh, Explorer Conda and go exploring and forget about this nonsense. Anyways, um, I apologize for those who've had to watch, who watched this painful exercise. Uh, I hope it wasn't like nails scratching on a chalkboard, although it probably was. Believe me, it was it took a long time to get here, and so... I don't know. Maybe I could do a couple of more jumps and a few more drops and then maybe make the power plant go critical if there's some magic, you know, where it goes from zero to minus one. I'm Commander Julius Dedekind. I'll see you guys later.